game studios suck. Microsoft is trying to get a monopoly. Nintendo's never put a game on sale in their entire existence. Sony has 11 exclusives for the PS5. That's not an exaggeration. And all of them hate you. Naughty Dog spent the last decade remaking the same two games over and over. Starfield was mid and Todd hasn't stopped re-releasing Skyrim long enough to make Elder Scrolls 6. We've been on GTA 5 for the last 10 years. CD Projekt Red had to start making anime to save their reputation after they released a game that looks like what Joe Biden sees every day. Soda! And while these companies are lazy and evil and they do want you dead, they do make some pretty good games. So when studios refuse to fix or make games that their audience want to play, that's when fans get to shove their fist in a glove and say, Fine. I'll do it myself. And once this decision is made, there are really only four paths to take, with the first being the most straightforward, to mod. Now when I say to mod, in this context I don't mean I want to have sex in Pac-Man. I mean when players are forced to make quality of life changes themselves because Nintendo would personally guillotine anyone they saw using Firefox notches. Let's talk about Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. Melee released in 2001 and accidentally became the greatest eSport ever made. Due to a mix of intentional and unintentional game design, the game ended up with incredibly complex and intricate combat mechanics with an incredibly high high skill ceiling. So much so that as new Smash games have released over the last 20 plus years, competitive Melee has continued to not only persevere, but grow. But having been made in 2001, there was obviously no way to play it online. Until in 2020, when a dude named Fizzy and his program named Slippy introduced rollback netcode and integrated matchmaking, making it possible for players across the country to play against each other with minimal latency and even being able to run tournaments. And funnily enough, is actually coded better than Nintendo's official online service for Smash Ultimate. So much so that Nintendo tried to have it killed. Or when following Melee, Nintendo released Super Smash Bros. Brawl, a game whose sole focus was to be incredibly slow and not have a competitive scene. So a group of community members came together to make something known as Project M, a mod for Brawl that made it play more like Melee. And of course, Nintendo had it killed! Or, unrelated to Smash, both SM2 and X Labs, which aimed to fix online play and improve the mechanics of the game overall which were both killed by Activision. Do you see why I called these guys evil? Or CTGP Revolution for Mario Kart Wii, a mod that adds over 200 courses and again, fixes online play. And this one hasn't even been killed yet. But sometimes a mod isn't enough. The game is just too far gone and fans decide to take the second path, to remake. This is the best path for violent masochists who have never felt the loving touch of a human in their entire lives. These psychopaths decide to rebuild entire games on different hardware and with different engines. My favorite example of this is CryZenX's Unreal Engine 5 remake of Ocarina of Time. This thing looks better than life. It looks like those crispy 8K Amazing Spider-Man gifs on Twitter. Now, the game is nowhere near finished. It's still a work in progress and very rough around the edges. But the fact that someone is willing to put the time and effort into a remake that looks this good is absolutely amazing. Also, every December they release a Christmas special that adds snowfall, lights, and dresses Link up like a little Santa boy. I love holiday-themed media. I love particle effects. This is beautiful. But this super realistic Spider-Man gif remake isn't the only kind of remake. Since its release, Bloodborne has been locked to the PS4 and the PS5 because that also plays PS4 games. Which is unfortunate because the game is sick and I bought a whole PS4 just to play it and the evil company mind games do work, but also Bloodborne PSX. Bloodborne PSX is a PC Bloodborne remake in the style of a PlayStation 1 game that is so cool and also absolutely psychotic that someone made this. Technically it's classified as a demake, but same thing. It's an incredibly faithful remake of the game and despite not having the entire game, it does have an ending. AM2R is a full fan remake of Metroid 2 that's really good and also got fucking orbital striked by Nintendo. This was probably partly because at the same time Nintendo was also developing their Metroid 2 remake in the form of Samus Returns for the 3DS, but the two are so different that AM2R is still completely worth it to play. Because yes, you can still play it, the internet is really big and cease and desist letters are merely a suggestion to the power of Reddit and Internet Archive. Black Mesa is a fan remake of the original Half-Life that is both endorsed by Valve and is currently sold on Steam, which is the coolest fucking thing on the planet, and it is nice to see a studio that doesn't want to behead their audience. But sometimes fans want a bit more freedom, sometimes they want to get a little bit funky with it, in which case they must go down the third path to fan game. That one doesn't work quite as well. I thought this format would flow better. Fan games are sometimes neat and often pretty weird. I played a Mario game that's full of suicide and psychotic murder ghosts. Personally, I think there's a line between, whoa, this is really cool, and oh, 
This is weird. You lost the plot, but also this would do really good on Tumblr. But hey, I'm not here to shit on people and call them weird. I'll leave talking about FNAF to my friend Indegenerate. Ayo! I think what makes an interesting fan game is the merging of a unique fan-fueled idea with the staples and mechanics of the series that the game is about. Pokemon Infinite Fusion blew the fuck up on YouTube Shorts and maybe TikTok, I don't know, I don't have that one, based simply on the mechanic of fusing Pokemon. The fact that someone made a game where you can do this for every Pokemon, 176,400 fusions, in a fan game for a series where sometimes you just fall through the floor. And I think that's part of why Infinite Fusion did so well, because Game Freak didn't just drop the ball, they intentionally four square cherry bombed it into the Earth's molten core. Similarly, Pokemon Wilds is a procedurally generated survival game based on Gen 2 Pokemon. Again, it's that merging of a neat idea with identifiable mechanics. Super Smash Land is a game designed to look like it was made for the Game Boy, which is fun and adorable. But if said fan wants to get even more creative, there's one final path for them to take. To spiritual successor, to, to spiritually succeed. We're done with this format. This is the last one. It doesn't matter. Spiritual successors have become some of the most popular games of our generation. I talk about this in my inspirations for video games video, but League of Legends, one of the largest esports of all time, is a spiritual successor to Defense of the Ancients, which was a mod for Warcraft 3. Stardew Valley is a spiritual successor to games like Harvest Moon. Hollow Knight to classic Metroidvania titles. Shovel Knight to classic NES games in general. Undertale to the Mother slash Earthbound games. While these games might be viewed as behemoths now, when they began, they were just fans trying to make a game and pay homage to the games that they love. Which all in all summarizes why some of this is so neat. Because when push comes to shove, sometimes fans are so incredibly creative and cool things will inspire cooler, newer things, whether big studios want it to or not. Fans will continue to make things about the things they care about, and sometimes it'll be bad and weird, and sometimes it'll be amazing. And that's awesome because that's me. I spend 90% of my time making videos about these games, hoping that someone will watch them and take something from it. We're all just people trying to make cool shit, and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. But after all of that, there is one constant. Nintendo will bulldoze your house and murder your family for any reason. Now subscribe and go watch this video about inspirations for video games.